गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस वट इज सरफेस ऑफ रेवोल्यूशन अ सरफेस जनरेटेड बाय द रेवोल्यूशन ऑफ अ प्लेन कर्व अबाउट इट्स एक्सेस दैट इज कॉल्ड सरफेस ऑफ रेवोल्यूशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू टेक द कॉर्डिनेट एक्सेस एक्स एक्सेस वाई एक्सेस एंड जेड एक्सेस एंड दिस राइट एंगल ट्राइंगल इज अ प्लेन कर्व let us rotate this right angle triangle about this axis then the surface of revolution which is generated here that you can see is a right circular cone so if we rotate a right angle triangle about this axis then the surface of revolution is a right circular cone the another example we can see if we take a semi circle let us take this is the diameter of the circle if you rotate this plane curve about this diameter then the surface of revolution you can see when this is rotated we get this sphere so the surface of revolution in this case that is a sphere now we will discuss the general equation of the surface of revolution for this let us take a plane curve in zx plane now in zx plane because y coordinate is zero so we can take a plane curve in xz plane by the equations x is equal to fu y is equal to zero and z is equal to ju let us rotate this plane curve through an angle v and about z axis this plane curve is rotated so in that case we get the new surface of revolution which is having the coordinates given by f of u cos v f of u sin v g of u this is the general equation for the general surface of revolution for our convenience in general we can take f of u is equal to u so in the numerical problems we will use the general surface of revolution given by u cos v u sin v and g of u so you will have to learn this equation in order to solve the numerical problems this is the equation of general surface of revolution now let us see some more examples first one is sphere so what will be the equation of sphere now if we rotate the curve x square plus z square is equal to a square in in zx plane about z axis this is a curve in zx plane because y is zero we rotate this curve about z axis then we get surface of revolution as sphere and the position vector of current point on this sphere that is having the coordinates a sin u cos v a sin u sin v and a cos u in the same way if we have surface of revolution as cone on cone the position vector of this point p this point p having the coordinates x y z this x is given by u cos v y is given by u sin v and z coordinate is given by u cot alpha where alpha is the angle shown in the figure and this length this is u cot alpha which can be obtained from this right angle triangle and v is this angle which we have shown now next is what is anchor ring you will ha just have to learn their definition and the position vector of current point on each surface of revolution so next is anchor ring now anchor ring is a surface generated by the rotation of a circle of radius a about a line in its plane at a distance which should be greater than the radius of the circle so the surface generated by the rotation of circle about that line which is at a distance greater than radius that surface is called anchor ring here we have shown this is a circle having the radius a and we will rotate this circle about this line this is a line which is at a distance greater than a means greater than the radius of the circle if we rotate the circle we get this 
surface of revolution and this is called the anchor ring the position vector of current point on this anchor ring is given by b plus a cos u into cos v b plus a cos u into sin v and a sin u this is a third coordinate so these are the coordinates of the current point on anchor ring next let us have next surface of revolution is helicoids what is helicoid helicoid is a surface generated by the screw motion of a curve about a fixed line here we have shown this curve this curve that is a helicoid and the position vector of current point on this helicoid is having the coordinates f of u cos v f of u sin v and third coordinate is g of u plus c v so you will have to keep in mind the coordinates of a point on each of the surface of revolutions now we will use these coordinates in the numerical problems now let us see the problems based on this so the first problem is find the fundamental magnitude for some important surfaces so all the surfaces which we have studied till yet we will find the fundamental magnitudes for all of them so the first is the general surface of revolution now we have already read that the position vector of current point on the general surface of revolution is given by r is equal to u cos v u sin v f of u this is x coordinate this is y coordinate this is z coordinate now we'll find all the fundamental magnitudes means e f g l m n now to find these six fundamental magnitudes we require r1 and r2 where r1 is the partial derivative of this vector r with respect to the parameter u now differentiating this with respect to u the derivative of u cos v is cos v derivative of u sin v is sin v derivative of f that is f dash now what is r2 r2 is a partial derivative of vector r with respect to the parameter v so its derivative with respect to v the derivative of cos v is minus sin v the derivative of sin v is cos v this is not a function of v so its partial derivative with respect to v that will be zero now we find the second order partial derivatives again differentiating with respect to u if this is differentiated with respect to u its derivative with respect to u will be zero its derivative with respect to u that will be zero the derivative of f dash is f double dash now its derivative with respect to u the derivative of u is 1 so the first coordinate will be minus sin v the derivative of this term is cos v the derivative of 0 that is 0 now differentiating this vector with respect to v if you differentiate this with respect to v the derivative of sin v is cos v the derivative of cos v is minus sin v and third coordinate is 0 so we get these second order partial derivatives now let us find all the fundamental magnitudes the first fundamental magnitude is e which is the dot product of the vector r1 with itself so taking dot product of this vector with itself we can say the square of its magnitude so that will be cos square v plus sin square v plus f dash square now cos square v plus sin square v that is 1 so we get 1 plus f dash square this is e now to find f f is given by the dot product of r1 and r2 now taking the dot product of these two we get minus u sin v cos v plus u sin v cos v these two terms are cancelled out so we get zero now what is g g is by definition the dot product of vector r2 with itself now taking dot product of r2 with itself we get u square sin square v plus u square cos square v plus 0 now sin square v plus cos square v is 1 so we get g is equal to u square now let us find r1 cross r2 
because we are also to find h to find h let us find r1 cross r2 now r1 cross r2 is given by these are the components of vector r1 these are the components of vector r2 so by using the definition of cross product you can find i the coefficient of i will be the product of these minus product of these minus j the product of these two minus product of these two plus k into the product of these two minus the product of these two so we get r1 cross r2 now let us find all the coefficients now what is h h is the square root of eg minus f square substituting the value of e g and f here we get the value of h square which is u square into 1 plus f dash square now taking square root we get h is equal to u into under root 1 plus f dash square now let us find n now n is given by n is normal unit vector so that is given by r1 cross r2 divided by h now r1 cross r2 we have obtained already substituting the value of r1 cross r2 and h here we get the value of normal unit vector to the given surface now let us find l m and n which are the second fundamental coefficients now to find l l is given by the dot product of the vector n with the vector r11 now taking the dot product of these two vectors their product is zero this product is zero the product of these two terms is f double dash divided by square root of 1 plus f dash square now to find m m is given by the dot product of vector n with r12 now the vector n is this and r12 is this vector taking their dot product and from here we get f dash sin v cos v minus f dash sin v cos v plus 0 divided by square root of 1 plus f dash square now these two terms are cancelled out so we get 0 the last fundamental coefficient is n which is given by the dot product of the normal unit vector n with the vector r22 just keep in mind these two n are different this n is the second fundamental magnitude and this n is the normal unit vector to the given surface so taking the dot product of these two we get this is n and this is vector r22 now taking their dot product the product of first two terms will be u into f dash cos square v the product of these two f dash u sin square v the product of these two terms that is zero so we get the values of all the fundamental coefficients thank you